Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today our video is about tubal ectopic pregnancy versus hemorrhagic corpus luteum cyst. To differentiate between a tubal ectopic pregnancy and a hemorrhagic corpus luteum cyst on imaging, particularly via ultrasound, there are several important factors to consider. Both conditions can present similarly in terms of symptoms, for example, lower abdominal pain, pelvic discomfort, and abnormal bleeding. But their management and the clinical implications are quite different. Here is how they can be distinguished based on ultrasound findings. First, we'll talk about tubal ectopic pregnancy. An ectopic pregnancy occurs when a fertilized egg implants outside the uterine cavity, most commonly in the fallopian tube. Tubal ectopic pregnancies are a medical emergency and require early diagnosis to avoid complications such as rupture and hemorrhage. Tubal ectopic pregnancy K ultrasound findings Number 1. Empty uterus Number 2. Adenexial mass Number 3. Pseudo-gestational sac Number 4. Human chorionogonotropin discrepancy Number 1. Empty uterus In a normal intrauterine pregnancy, a gestational sac should be visible within the uterus by the time a patient has a positive pregnancy test. The absence of a gestational sac in the uterus with a positive serum beta human chorionogonotropin raises suspicion for an ectopic pregnancy. Number 2. Adenexial mass The presence of a complex adenexial mass or tuber ring sign, which is a hyperechoic ring around the gestational sac, is highly suggestive of an ectopic pregnancy. This ring represents the trophoblastic tissue surrounding the pregnancy. A live ectopic pregnancy may show a yolk sac or even a fetal bowl with cardiac activity in advanced cases. Free fluid in the pelvis, particularly if echogenic, could indicate hemoprotoneum, which is a sign of rupture or significant hemorrhage. Number 3. Pseudo-gestational sac Occasionally, a fluid collection in the uterine cavity, known as pseudo-gestational sac, may be seen. However, this doesn't exhibit the typical double decidual sac sign of a true intrauterine pregnancy. Number 4. Human chorionic gonadotropin discrepancy In cases of suspected ectopic pregnancy, there is often a discrepancy between the serum beta human chorionic gonadotropin levels and ultrasound findings. When the beta human chorionic gonadotropin levels are above the discriminatory zone, which is above 1,500 to 2,000 international unit per liter, an intrauterine pregnancy should be visible on ultrasound. If not, it raises concern for an ectopic pregnancy. Hemorrhagic corpus luteum cyst A hemorrhagic corpus luteum cyst forms when a corpus luteum, the structure left behind after ovulation, bleeds internally. These cysts are common, self-limiting, and don't require surgical intervention unless complicated by rupture or significant bleeding. Hemorrhagic corpus luteum cyst K ultrasound findings Number 1. Adenexia cyst with lacy or reticular internal pattern Number 2. No significant blood flow Number 3. Peripheral enhancement Number 4. Resolution on follow-up Number 5. Associated with intrauterine pregnancy Number 1. Adenexia cyst with lacy or reticular internal pattern a hemorrhagic corpus luteum often appears as a cystic structure in the ovary with internal fine reticular echoes or a cobweb-like appearance due to blood clots. Over time, these cysts may undergo evolution, appearing more complex 
but without significant solid components or vascularity. Number two, no significant blood flow. Color Doppler typically shows no increased vascularity in hemorrhagic corpus luteum, unlike an ectopic pregnancy, which may show increased blood flow surrounding the ectopic gestational sac, often described as the ring of fire on Doppler ultrasound. Number three, peripheral enhancement. The corpus luteum cyst may have a thick wall with peripheral enhancement, but lacks the central solid components seen in a tubal ectopic pregnancy. Number four, resolution on follow-up. Hemorrhagic corpus luteum cysts typically resolve over time, and follow-up ultrasounds usually show decreasing size or disappearance of the cyst. Number five, associated with intrauterine pregnancy. A corpus luteum is a normal structure in early pregnancy and its presence is not exclusive to pathology. In cases of intrauterine pregnancy, a corpus luteum may be seen without raising concern of her ectopic pregnancy. Differentiation between tubal ectopic pregnancy and hemorrhagic corpus luteum cyst. According to number one, location, number two, internal structure, number three, Doppler flow, number four, human chorionic gonadotropin correlation, number five, risk of rupture. Number one, location. Ectopic pregnancy typically occurs in the fallopian tube and is seen as a separate adenexial mass from the ovary. But hemorrhagic corpus luteum located within the ovary. Number two, internal structure. Ectopic pregnancy may show a complex adenexial mass with a gestational sac, fetal ball, or yolk sac. But hemorrhagic corpus luteum characterized by reticular internal echoes without the presence of embryonic structures. Number three, Doppler flow. Ectopic pregnancy may show a ring of fire on Doppler imaging indicating trophoblastic blood flow. But hemorrhagic corpus luteum lacks significant blood flow or shows peripheral blood flow only without central vascularity. Number four, human chorionic gonadotropin correlation. In ectopic pregnancy, there is a discrepancy between HCG levels and ultrasound findings. An empty uterus with HCG levels above the discriminatory zone is highly suspicious. But hemorrhagic corpus luteum doesn't alter HCG levels and intrauterine pregnancy may still be present. Number 5. Risk of Rupture Ectopic pregnancy has a high risk of rupture, leading to hemorrhage and hemodynamic instability, necessitating emergency intervention. But hemorrhagic corpus luteum can occasionally rupture, but the prognosis is generally more benign and managed conservatively unless there is significant bleeding. Conclusion While both tubal ectopic pregnancy and hemorrhagic corpus luteum cysts can present with similar clinical symptoms and a complex adenexial masses, there are key ultrasound findings that help differentiate between the two. Ectopic pregnancies require urgent diagnosis and treatment to prevent complications, whereas hemorrhagic corpus luteum cysts are generally self-limiting. A combination of ultrasound, HCG levels, and the clinical presentation is essential in making the correct diagnosis. Thank you for watching.